Welcome to the Visualize Operations Manager Guide by Scott Norris and Chris Later, Section Security. In this section, we're going to have a closer look at users, groups, roles, Active Directory and vCenter, and how they play a role in Visualize Operations Manager. Specifically, we're going to go through how do we create and modify these constructs to be able to give users and groups permissions to view certain dashboards and reports in Visualize Operations Manager. We'll be covering off certain use cases, such as how to create a user or group uh, from scratch, and how to give them just the information they need to do their role within a certain organization. In this video, we're going to take a specific look at how users play a role in Visualize Operations Manager. We'll cover off how do we create local Visualize Operations Manager users, the use cases where an external directory may not be present, how do we import Active Directory users or users from an external directory source, and how do we assign roles and permissions to users, covering off use cases such as a security user or an administrator, executive who may only want to see access to a certain part of the UI, certain dashboards for certain use cases. In the next video, we'll cover off groups, how to create groups, assign groups to roles, and assign groups to certain use cases that we'll work through as well. Right, now let's get started. Now the first thing we need to do is to log into the vRealize Operations Manager UI. Now right now we're going to be logging in as a local user as a default admin user account. But by the end of this video series, we'll be able to log in as a specific user based on specific use cases. So now that we've logged in, we've gone through the UI in the previous section. Let's go to the administrator view where we can actually go and administer user accounts. So under the administration view, we see on the navigation bar on the left, we have access control and authentication sources. Access control is where we're going to go through and create our various user accounts or import our user accounts from a directory source, create and apply our groups, our roles, and our password policies that we'll go through later on in this section. Under the, the authentication sources section, this is where we can add external directories that we can import users from for external sources. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and create a local user account. This is done by selecting the Add User or Add button at the top left of the screen. So here we can fill in the basic information about the user, such as the username, password, the first name, last name, email address, description, And we can fill in the other, there's also some checkboxes around do we want to disable the user or do we also require that they change their password on first login. Now the next option we have is do we want to assign the user on its own uh, as part of this creation process to an existing groups or directly to any objects. Right? So in this case what we're going to do is we're going to say yes he's a member of the IT security group. And now we can look at assigning objects to the user. In the case of the group that we've just assigned, that group doesn't yet have any objects assigned to it or any other permissions. So therefore, this user still won't be able to use anything inside the Visualize Operations Manager. Therefore, we can go directly to the objects and apply objects directly to this user account. We'll be covering off how to add roles to users and groups in a later section. So I'm going to choose my pre-existing role within the system for the read-only role. Once I've selected the role, I have to check the box to say, assign this role to this user. And then I can choose the hierarchies that I want to apply it to. Now, by default, the adapter instance is selected. We have a couple of different options here. The first is we can allow access to all objects within the system, essentially giving the user anything, any object or any uh, that is inside Realize Operations Manager, any context, this user will be able to see it. But in our case, we're going to do some more fine game role-based access control. So if we unselect that, the first thing we're able to choose from is possibly the adapter instance. So in this case, maybe, well, this user's from security, we'd only give them wanting to give them access to a specific adapter instance. This is quite a macro level of permissions that can be quite useful. For example, if we have a team who specifically looks after Amazon Web Services machines, maybe we want to give them access to anything that comes from the management pack for AWS. At the same time, we can say, well, look, maybe we want to give them access to anything that comes from vSphere, for example. Now, in our use case as well, we can even go further with the hierarchy and choose, well, maybe the security team is only interested in looking at a specific object or a hierarchy within the system. So we can select maybe vSphere hosts and clusters. Under the vSphere adapter, we see our data center and we see our cluster. 
Underneath, we could select possibly even individual resource pools, individual hosts. We also have the option to propagate permissions. When we choose propagation, the user will get access to that object as well as all its child objects. So in this case, we have virtual machines. Now in our situation, security are going to need to have access to look at the entire system, any object, any view, but we don't want them to the chain systems, which is why I've given them a read-only role. So what I'll do is I'll unselect the choice we've made here, and I'll say they'll have access to all objects in the system from a read-only view. Once that's been done, I can select Finish and finish the Add User Creation Wizard. So now that we have created a local user and assigned it to a role, it's time to do the final task now of importing a user from a directory source, such as Active Directory. So similar to when we create a local user, instead of clicking the Add button at the top, we have the Import Users button to the right. Now, for this process to be successful, we have to have already added in the external directory, Active Directory source. We'll be covering the process of how to do that in a later video. So once we've added the external directory, the next thing we do is select the Import Users button. So we select Import Users. Now, by default, our directory will already be selected. If we have multiple directories, we can choose from the drop-down list. Uh, we can also add a directory in here as well, if one doesn't exist. So the next thing we do is a search string. So when we look about us in adding a user, we are so, um, adding an individual user. We can use Advanced to search specific trees of Active Directory, or I use, uh, but in terms of search string, we'll simply say type the username, for example. So if I take Jason, who's my user, do a search, Jason, that's him. Now that we've selected Jason, we are presented with a similar group membership screen to when we're creating a local user, so we'll add into the same group, IT security, and we have the same ability to apply roles uh, and vary it to various objects throughout Virilize operations. So, in a similar way, what we did with Max, we'll select the role. So, the role might be the same role, read only in this case. We'll say yes, we want to assign the role to this user. And then, once uh, we've selected that we will assign the role, what objects will we assign that role to? In this case, we'll do the same process, which is say we'll allow all objects, uh, access to all objects in the system with the read only role. Then, finally, we click finish. Now once that's been once that's done, we see what we've done is we've added JSON and we've added Max into Virilize Operations under the user. We can see with the user groups and permissions tab that they're a member of the IT security group. Uh, so they're a member of the everyone group, that's always added by default. And finally we can see in the permissions tab they have a read-only permission and that's on all objects. And that's the process of adding in users. That's now complete. So in this short video, we've covered off the process of creating a local user. Uh, and assigning that user uh, to a role, the read-only role, uh, as well as all objects in the inventory. And we've also covered off the process of importing a user from Active Directory and going through a similar process.